G'day Weather Watchers. Time for a 29U update. That is to say 29U, he's dragged his heels a little bit, hasn't quite reached cyclone status. He hasn't decreased and hasn't increased. He's kind of just been maintaining smooth sailing at this point. And, uh, but any hour, look, he'll, he'll, he'll start to spin up a bit stronger. It's just been one of those situations where every time he moves into this environment, a little bit of wind shear pops up and it just kind of gives him a little rock. Doesn't do too much to him. It just means that he doesn't allow for that rapid increase uh, into cyclone strength, but that, that'll, that'll occur at any point now. And by midweek, as he continues on the southwest trajectory, as you can now see on the animated model here, is that he'll move adjacent but well offshore Kimberley waters uh, and moving in that southwesterly and then becoming a more west to southwesterly direction, bringing him out over to open waters from the Pilbara region, probably due north directly from Headland. I'll be saying probably by about midweek, and that's at the point where there'll probably be some intensification up to a category three, maybe going beyond or maybe just maybe around a category two. Still a bit unknown this time of year. It can be a little bit tricky to, to grade that, but we would probably take a safe bet at around a category three strength. And pretty much all modeling is, is saying that at this point. So that's what's likely to play out over, let's say the short to mid range, which is up until about midweek. Now, one thing we talked about last night was that potential for stalling. Most models have started to actually align with that stalling, and that is just due to the fact that um, once he gets out there, the winds are sort of just going to, they're coming in at a point which just keeps him spinning on a, on a point. And uh, that throws all of the mid to long range trajectories pretty much out the window because once you stall, it allows time for the environment around the system to change. Once the environment changes, that changes the winds, which changes the direction it goes. That's why cyclone tracking changes a lot. It depends on what the system actually does. So unless the system has actually got a, like a very, very um, dominant wind force on, the, on all the steering layers, pushing it in one direction, very difficult to lock down a track beyond about three, three days out. That's why this, the bureaus, for instance, can get the tracking so wrong from uh, the time they first see a system, give it a tracking plot, a plot track, and then let's say five, six, seven days later, it is drastically different from what you were originally seeing. It's just because we don't know what the uh, longer range um, winds above our heads are actually going to do that far out. We still don't have great insight, and that's, that's kind of where it's at. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll now overlay the um, the models sort of, you know, in terms of uh, what they all believe and what they think this thing's going to do. And as you can see, they're all fairly well aligned. That is to say, they all think the same thing, pretty much. So there aren't too many outliers at this point. So that's a good sign in terms of what we think is going to transpire. It's just going to be on that longer range where, <laughs> who knows? But my thoughts, I think by late week, uh, the winds will probably change and not in favour of cyclone intensity. I think they will start to deteriorate and that means we're probably looking at the cyclone strength decreasing, maybe back down to tropical low strength and likely taking a southerly dive, especially if there's any cold fronts to the south that might give a tendency to pull this thing inland. So probably seeing a Pilbara coastal crossing as a probably a tropical low, and some, model is, some models are actually leaning towards that in the longer range. Take what you will of the longer range, folks. I don't take too much out of it. And yeah, we'll just keep monitoring this thing daily to see how, how he plays out, how those winds go. I would suggest we're probably only getting about three days of fairly accurate wind forecasts at this point. So don't don't see too far ahead of three days is what I'm trying to say here. Because, uh, yeah, you'll, you're not doing yourself any favours if you do. Again, you look at those animated charts, you'll drive you crazy. So let's check back in tomorrow, see how 29U or Errol is doing. And uh, we'll also be keeping an eye on developing low 30U in the background. Not much to update on at this point on that one. Okay, folks, we'll uh, catch you all soon.